So how will we go about finding this pressure? Well, it seems like we could relate all three of them by mm -hmm. adding them up to equal zero, maybe? Equal, to equal delta u. You could relate all three delta u's. Yeah. That's right. Uh, the problem is that I think it will be tough to, that, that would require us to find all the individual delta u's. And anyway, I, I think that still wouldn't give us the pressure because delta u doesn't really have an equation that relates it with pressure. Okay. It turns out that there's a relatively simple way to find the pressure from the information that we're given. It's not going to be uh, a lot of steps. From the information that we're given, there's a relatively simple way to find the pressure. Okay. Um, so... No, yeah, go ahead. So on the test, you'll be able to look at your cheat sheets. Mm -hmm. You can go ahead and feel free to do that here, too. Okay, so I think that... Oh, yeah, I think it's going to be easy. So if you look at from C to A, right. you know that your initial... Um, you kind of just do PV equals PV. So if you have C is your initial position, mm -hmm. P is what you're looking for, mm -hmm. and V is 4, and then... So what's the equation we're going to use here again? So it's P initial times V initial is equal to P final times V final. Now how do we know whether that's an equation that's relevant for this CA process? Oh, it's not. All right, that's right. <laughs> so from our cheat sheet, we saw there's only a couple of formulas that are always relevant. Yeah. We put it at the top. Most of the formulas depend on the process. Mm -hmm. what, what type of process could we use this equation for? For an isotheric process. Isothermal, yeah, Isothermal. for an isothermal yeah. process. Uh, we saw that for an isothermal, uh, nRT is constant, so PV is constant. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we don't actually have any isothermal processes. But you're actually, we're definitely on the right track. Uh, this is just not this precise equation. Uh, but we could use P initial, V initial raised to gamma. Right. Times P final, V final raised to gamma. Equals. Yeah, equals, sorry. P final, V final raised to the gamma. Mm -hmm. There we go. And okay. then, and we know that gamma equals C of P over C of P. That's right. Now we're on the right track. Good. Um, and we can find C of V. Mm -hmm. um, and that said, that's part of the problem. Yeah, that's I'm sorry. Here's the, all the information that we're given in the problem. Okay. So C of V equals... Um, uh, five halves R. Yeah, C sub V equals five halves R. And we didn't prove that. We just put we just put that in the cheat sheet. Okay. Good. And then C of P will equal that value plus R. So. Good. <coughs> so this is 5 halves r plus 2 halves r would give you 7 halves r. Good. Um, okay. So then uh, gamma equals um, 7 halves r plus 5 halves r, which is just Seven fifths. That's right. Seven fifths. The way to divide two fractions is to multiply by the reciprocal. So instead of dividing by five r over two, we can multiply by two over five r, and the r's cancel, and the two's cancel, and we end up with seven fifths. So you're right that gamma would be seven fifths. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, and then we go back to our. PV equation. Right. Um, and so P initial is what we're looking for. Right. Uh, v initial is 4 raised to the 7 fifths. Good. Um, and then P final is 1 atmosphere. Right. Um, I'm not sure about the units. Yeah, we can talk about the units in a second for that. That's okay. good that you're thinking about that. It seems like if all of those, it's constant, then it doesn't matter. I think that's the right instinct. Yeah, let's come back to that in a second, but that okay. sounds good. And then V final is 2 meters cubed, raised to gamma. 
this point would be 2 raised to the 7 fifths. Mm -hmm. That's already in cubic meters, which is already the standard units for volume. Now, this is in atmospheres. Yeah, which is in Now, and so does it, make, does it matter whether we, uh, it turns out that you can use atmospheres as long as you expect atmospheres from here. Yeah. And the reason is, how would we change this into Pascals? Well, we would change this into Pascals by multiplying it by a conversion ratio. Um, but we would also change this by multiplying it by the same conversion ratio. Yeah. Well, multiplying both sides of an equation by the same thing isn't going to change anything. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get, uh, so we're not really going to uh, change uh, anything substantial here by changing this into Pascal. So I should have mentioned before that this equation here, you can, uh, you don't, it doesn't matter what units you use as long as you're consistent with them. Okay, okay good. Do you have your calculator? Yeah. All right, good. So let's go ahead and work that out. know how to do these exponents here, but you saw, since there's two things in the exponents, we have to put them in parentheses. In order to do them in the calculator, you have to put the exponents in parentheses. So you end up with p initial is 2 to the 7 fifths divided by 4 to the 7 fifths. Mm -hmm. On the calculator, you would put the exponents in parentheses, and you got uh, uh, about 0.38. Mm -hmm. All right, so as usual, we won't worry about the significant figures. What would be the units on that? Uh, atmospheres? Yeah, 0.38 atmospheres. That's less than one atmosphere, so that seems good. Okay, good. So this is a common type of problem, so we should stop and look at this. You can see one of the hardest things here, and one reason why this takes practice, is we have so many equations that it can be hard to know where to look. You have so many different ways to solve things, it can be easy to look for the hard path when there's an easier path. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, the thing we talked about a little bit briefly when we were making our cheat sheet together was this is a common type of problem where they basically give you three of the four coordinates for, uh, for a process. They've given us three of the four coordinates. They gave us two of the, uh, uh, they gave us uh, both the volumes and one of the pressures. And we developed a couple of equations for just that situation. In fact, we developed these two equations right here. This is the equation that we could use for an isothermal process, and here's the equation for an adiabatic. And we don't need any of the uh, more complicated stuff that you were maybe thinking about yeah. in this case. We can just use these two equations when we're, uh, so when we're given uh, three of the four coordinates for a process, we can find the fourth one using either of these two equations. Okay. Um, and yeah, both of these equations, you don't need to use standard units as long as you're consistent. Um, and that's really because there's a pressure on both sides. This is a little confusing because could you use atmospheres in this equation? No, because there's no other pressure to kind of cancel it out. Yeah. At least um, if, it, you, if you use the standard value for R, which is in terms of Pascal's, you have to use Pascal's here as well. So this, you have to use SI units. Of course, if you were in doubt, if the safest thing is to convert the units, but we didn't have to do that here. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw that the rules for temperature are different. You always have to use Kelvins for temperature unless the formula has delta T, mm -hmm. and then it doesn't matter whether you use Kelvins or Celsius. Find the work. Done by the gas and heat absorbed. In the process from A to B. Okay. So finding the work done by the gas means we find the area 